Hey y'all, I'm back for part three of our series uh, talking about polyneuropathy of the peripheral nerves. So in the first video, I gave y'all signs and symptoms and told you a little about peripheral nerves and their, their um, actions and where they are in the body. So in the second part, we talked about my symptoms from the head down to my neck. So we'll go from the neck down to the abdominal area. So my first symptom that I first developed uh, was this wraparound banding type pain on my right side below my breast and wrapped around to my back. Um, when I first had these symptoms, they thought that I had shingles. Um, if you know anything about shingles, shingles is a little um, area. It can be on your face, your neck, anywhere on your body. And it develops into like this rash and a painful rash at that. So the first uh, signs of shingles, which is why they thought I had shingles, you can have this type of tingling, burning sensation in the area where the rash will develop and the blisters will form. Um, but I didn't have any rashes, any blisters, any of that. But they still treated me for shingles like I had shingles. So we went through that. That didn't work. Um, I still had the same type of burning uh, tightness around my rib around my rib cage area to my back. Still had all the symptoms, so we were just stuck from there. My next symptom, um, when you come to my arms, my hands, I started having this like trembling sensation where I couldn't write. Um, and a lot of people always said I had a beautiful handwriting, but at that point in time, I couldn't write. It was like every little word I was trying, or every letter I was trying to form came out to be a little squiggly mess. So I started having that and I I was so afraid at that point in time because my daughter was pregnant and I had this fear that if I tried to hold the baby, I may drop the baby because I had no real control of my hands and they were just shaking so bad. So I developed those little tremors and then um, my next symptom, I told you about the difficulty swallowing and um, then I had problems with my stomach digesting foods. Um, I also, I'm sorry, y'all, I'm all over the page with this because like I said, this has been going on since 2003. So trying to remember the uh, symptoms and how they formed and where they formed is a little bit difficult um, because in the last video, I told you I still have some of that um, haziness that I had uh, trying to form my words and trying to remember what I'm trying to say and getting those words out. So I still sometimes deal with that, but not as bad. So I'm just trying to remember all the way back to 2003. I had a tablet where I wrote down all my symptoms. Don't know where is it, of course, but um, I'm just trying to remember the symptoms and go through them as they come up. Um, my next problem, I had dealt with urinary hesitancy and urinary retention. So I had problems going to the bathroom to have um, to make urine. I would drink, drink, drink. I would go sit on the toilet maybe about uh, 45 seconds. And 45 seconds is a long time if you ever had to sit and count it. It's a long time before I was able to start a urine stream. So um, with that, since I had the hesitancy and retention, of course it causes you to develop urinary tract infections. So I had those quite often. The doctor that I was seeing at the time decided to finally put me on antibiotics for 14 days every month for a year. Well, seven to 14 days every month for a year. And that finally um, eased up with the, helped me to ease up with the frequency of my urinary tract infections. I still have them sometimes, but not as often as I was having them starting back in 2003, 2004, 2005. So that actually cleared up. My next problem was fecal incontinence. Now, I know a lot of people don't want to hear about this. I didn't even want to de deal with it, but I had to. So with the fecal incontinence, I had no control over my uh, rectal area, the nerve, you know, the control of pushing out or stopping. You know, usually if you have an urgency to go to have a bowel motion, you can kind of clench your muscles and hold it. Mine wouldn't do that. So... I never really soiled myself per se. What happened was whenever I would go to the bathroom to have like, uh, to urinate, then I would wipe front to back, of course. And I would see that there was stool on the tissue. So that got me worried. I went to the doctor, told them about that. They did what they call a 
fecal defogram, fecal defogram, where they uh, measure your, uh, uh, let me get this right, I don't want to lie, uh, but you would push, they would have an instrument and you would push, 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 bear down like you're having a bowel motion and they will see the strength of your muscles or your nerves in that area, mostly your muscles, not your nerves. But if your nerve functions are not firing off the right way down there, then you can still pass stool without you knowing it. So I started to have to, you know, take some wipes with me wherever I went. Of course, take a pad with me wherever I went because I never knew if I was going to actually soil myself or if it was just going to be, like I said, when I wiped. Um, so I, I dealt with that. There was really nothing they gave me to treat that. Eventually, it would go away. But I still have that problem now, and I can tell when it's going to happen because it feels like there's a um, some type of itch in the muscle wall of the rectal area and a little tingling, itchy type feeling. And I knew then, whenever I have that, that I know, okay, you're about to have some fecal incontinence some kind of way. It, like I said, never saw it myself, never saw my underwear, nothing like that. It was just when I wiped, I would see it. So I always keep wipes with me. I always take um, little panty liners or pads, not sanitary pads, because, you know, those are, can be kind of thick and I don't need those anymore. Anyway, that's another story. But um, so I dealt with that. And like I said, I still deal with that. It just happens out of the blue. I don't know what causes it. Sometimes they say stress can cause you to have some type of reactions with your nerves. I don't know. All I know is that when it's happened, when it happens, I just have to be aware of what I'm doing, what I have going on and all of that. So I didn't have really many symptoms from the neck down to my abdominal area other than those few things. Um, no problems with eating regular foods. Like I said, I choked a little bit on meats and sometimes I would choke on water. But I could eat like normal things and not have that problem. So I, I ate vegetables. I had no problems. It was just the meats like hamburger meat for sure. Chicken for sure. Um, I didn't eat pork or anything like that. So I didn't have, I can't tell you about that. But any type of seafood, I was okay. It was just like the chicken or uh, beef. I would have problems with where I would choke. I don't care how small of a bite I took. I would still have that choking sensation. So that's really about all in that area. Now, when we go down to my legs and below my stomach, that's when we have the problems. Um, I did find out during, um, I think it was 2017, I had another MRI. Now, I don't know about the doctors where you are, but a lot of the doctors, if that area is not what they're looking at, then they don't discuss your results in that area. So say I had a MRI of my back. I had a cervical, lumbar, and sacral MRI. So it co covered from my neck all the way down. So when I did get the results finally from those MRIs, because I had like I said, an injury on my job. So I got those results and took them to my other doctor. That's when I knew that I had a uh, C-spine, which is your neck area right back here. I had all types of disc, bulging discs, you name it. I had it. C2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Those are all just a big old mess back there. So I do have um, like spasms, tightness up in my neck area, my shoulders, and I can have some real bad pain with that from those nerves. Don't know if it has anything to do with what I have going on or not. No one can seem to tell me. But like I said, I had that test done back in... My dates are off. I'm thinking it was 2018. And then in 2020 is when I finally... No, tw yeah, 2020 is when I finally saw the results for myself that I realized my neck is totally messed up. So I'm saying all that to say this, please be an advocate for yourself at your doctor's offices. Even if you don't understand the results, 
I knew a little bit, like I said, because I work in the medical field, but I didn't think that I would have to get those results and go through them myself. I was trusting and hoping and believing in my doctor that, you know, anything that they found, they would discuss it with me. But of course they didn't. So I'm saying all that to say this, be an advocate for yourself, get your test results, sign, go sign the documents because you know it's a HIPAA thing going out now. So you have to make sure you sign for all your documents, even though they're yours, you still have to sign to get those documents released to you. Keep you a binder with all of your results. If you see something that seems to be abnormal, find someone to look at those with you, to discuss those with you and take the actions that you need to help yourself. Because I have learned being in the medical field and being myself as a patient, you have to advocate for yourself because no one else will. You will have some doctors that are good doctors and they are very few and far in between. But there are some really good doctors who will be your advocate. They will make sure that everything is taken care of. But in order to stay on top of that, you have to be an advocate for yourself. So I'm going to leave you all with that message. Hope you take that and do something with it for yourself. If you have an illness that is not seen with the naked eye and you're constantly going through some problems, getting help, make sure you get all of your documents, keep them in a binder so that you have them. When you go to a different doctor or a new doctor who may be willing to help you with your issues. So in other words, y'all just have a blessed day. Stay tuned for part four of this series and we'll get to the real problems then. Thank you. Y'all have a blessed day.